Ray came over today for a few hours, and uh, as I was saying, before the home phone, <laughs> uh, Ray came over because we had to put this box back in here, which was over there before. We put the new wheels on it, had to put a new axle in it, so uh, we got the new axle. Um, got the gears on, I had to cut those in, uh, and then I had to run the bolt through, and then when Ray came over today, we put this in here, and while I was getting this ready, um, this, the unit, Ray was tightening up the wheels to make sure that everything was straight, because we didn't want them to wobble and start hitting the sides. So, that's what we have. Now, these wheels are, um about a quarter inch wider and they're about a half inch taller all the way around uh, which is actually going to be better these wheels are also made to carry a thousand pounds each so even if we rated it as a thousand for the pair uh, this is only coming in at about 130 140 pounds so we're all set with that um, now we do have some cracks here there's this one that goes down and down into here and then we got this one over here. Now, these were here before. I was going to fix them, and then I forgot about it. And now once this cake got in there, this was a pain in the ass getting in. It was not easy. Um, but at that point, uh, I'm going to take these and fix these. Uh, probably now. I got to take this out of there. And uh, these are the actual tie downs. When you tie this thing down uh, into the trailer, you're supposed to tie onto this. Now, the thing is, when this is right side up, these are very hard to get to. That's why I put these lines on there so that you disconnect it from here and then you can just tie onto this cleat, this, this link. So you would take this off of here and then use this on your tie downs. Don't tie down on these. These are just fiberglass in there. These, that's why they were like they were. They were falling apart, they were broke. It took me a day just to do the body work on this thing. The one in the front, the nose cone, uh, that was a total disaster. I mean, really. I mean, I had to reshape it. Oh, it was just a nightmare, it really was. So anyway, uh, I'm going to take care of these today, get these fiberglass in. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little support to this. Uh, I'm going to put a piece of probably stainless steel uh, square stock to go across from here to here. Resting on this. We have plenty of room to do it with. Um, and that will also help support the body and everything at the same time. I have to put a plate here and another plate here, but I think it, all in all it'll be better. And then I want to do another one in the front. And I want to get this back out where it belongs. This was laying on its side for so long with all this weight on it. If you look at this side and see how close it is versus this side, you can see that this side is the side it was laying on. So all the weight was pushing against this for what, two months, three months? So uh, I want to put that brace on there and gradually bring this back out. I can't do it all at once. It would take a couple of days and get that out. And then when I'm ready to flip it back, before I do that, I'm going to put some rubber scuff on this um, so we don't have to worry about the fiberglass wearing and scuffing up. So and we'll see what happens with that. So for the most part, the wheels are on, the axles, the drives, there's two drives, there's a motor for each wheel. They work independent, that's why you can turn it around and such. Um, and there's a new axle in it, because the axle that was there just wasn't working. Um, we did have to modify this body a little bit. Uh, to make up to get it in there because the new axle the new axle and with these wheels being a little bit wider You know a quarter inch on this one a quarter inch on that one. We're talking a half inch more 
and this was that tight to where that half inch made a big difference. So what I had done, I took a two and a half inch hole saw and just on the opposite side of this in here, I draw the two and a half inch hole on both sides so that the axle actually had a place to fit into while we got the other side in. And that's what we did with that because you can see the lip here. So there was plenty of room for me to drill a two and a half inch hole in there. So, and you're never going to see it and it's fiberglass so it's nothing you got to worry about. Uh, and there's no weight on it. It was strictly there to give me room to get this in. And uh, I got to thank Ray again for coming over because this isn't real heavy, but it's heavy enough. And because of the size and how it has to go in, uh, it's clumsy enough to where one person couldn't do it. I went nuts taking it out. I don't think I would have gotten it back in if I hadn't had it ready to give me a hand. So, so now I want to bring it back up on that side, um, but I want to do the body work first. Get that out of the way. Um, I got to get these off. I don't know how they're on there. I got to see if I can get to them from the inside. I'm thinking they're threaded on, um, but to do it right, I'm going to have to get those off there. So let's see what I can come up with. And this has got to come out. Let's see, will that screw up? I think it should. Yeah, it's connected to something. So that's going to have to come out. That's some type of a, well, I know what it is. It's a drain. There's a, um, a bilge pump in here that drains out the bottom. However, it doesn't work because when I had gotten it, there was almost three gallons of water in this thing. That's why I drilled this little hole. Now I do have a pump that I started to wire up for it. I think this is it. Yeah, here it is. So here's a 12 volt pump that I wired up. I'm thinking about putting this on the inside and using this as the bilge pump. There's an in, there's an out. Put it back here, you know, or wherever the water happens to gather. And uh, I'll bring the rubber tubing out of this hole just enough to where I can seal it off. I don't want to have it dragging. Uh, so, and these wheels are also, uh, they're about a half inch taller, like I just said, all the way around. So that'll also bring this up a little bit more. So it should help with a lot of this scuff work because, because the other wheels, I mean, well, the other wheels are a nightmare. I'm actually glad that I made the decision yeah, I'm going to pat myself on the back and made a decision to not buy these from the shop, from the, the robot company there, Robotronics, uh, who had said that, uh, I forgot his name, Ray, Dominic, Dominic, Dom, it wasn't Ray, Dominic maybe, uh, he's the only one that's in the tech support department. And he was telling me, like I said, these wheels were like $130, $35 a piece. And the spacer which I was able to modify to fit these wheels were something like an extra 15 a piece or something. Uh, I stopped listening to him after a while because it was just getting crazy. Uh, but you can tell. He said, oh, the wheels that they have are made for this. Well, you can tell that they drilled them out because the first time apparently they drilled it out crooked, so they actually made the hole bigger. Uh, and the same with this one. You know, so... These were not made specifically for this, um, but I'm glad that I decided to go with another set of wheels, and uh, and that will be all set with it, and uh, they're working. All right. The only thing I got to do now is fix that. Because when I do this, see how it catches? See what happens? So I got to take care of that. Uh, and I got to figure out exactly how I'm going to do it. I like to do it while it's upright on its back, uh, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not. I wonder if I use some CA glue on it just to hold it in place so I can get it turned over, and then I can just fill it with some... Uh, fiberglass 
instead of fiberglass in it. Just, you know, like I say, fill it with fiberglass. Same thing, it's going to hold. But I want to make sure this is shut before I flip it back over. Because I don't want the shit to just start oozing out on me. Yeah, let me see. Let me get some CAD. Alright, now. Let's this is not a real heavy-duty clamp, and it's got rubber on both sides. I'm hoping it will give me enough squeeze to kind of tighten this up in here. Mm, maybe not. No. It gives it to me, but it doesn't hold it. That's the problem. That's the problem with these clamps, actually. I would probably never buy these again because of that reason. When you need them, they're just not there for you. All right. There's another one. Ah, there we go. Okay. Now you're not going to see what I'm doing, but... I'm going to put a little Okay. I wanted it to be to where the CA will get into there. stuck on the clamp. Okay. Now, I don't know if you guys ever done this or not, but uh, you get some of that CA glue, crazy glue, whatever you want to call it, and uh, baking powder, or baking soda. And uh, this stuff works. It really does. Uh, now I'm going to pour this in here. I put some glue in the crack. Now that's not going to do anything right yet. I'm just trying to get the soda into the crack. What I did was I took an ice cream stick and I kind of honed out the end of it a little bit. So I use it as a spoon. Okay, now I hopefully put some glue in there and sealed it a little bit. And then I put the bacon soda all around there. And a lot of it over where that crack is. Now I'm going to drop this on there and you're going to see smoke. So you don't want to be over it. You don't want to be inhaling the smoke that comes out of there. It's a reaction between the <coughs> this, this and that. See the smoke? Like I said, you don't want to inhale that. So, well ventilated. area. Now if that's wet enough, which I don't know, we'll find out in a second. I'm going to put more of this on there. See what it's doing is with that smoke, it's a chemical reaction, but it's also getting real hot so it helps melt in and seal whatever it is that you're trying to work with. So it works as a filler as well as 
kind of foxy type thing. Yeah. Now uh, it's stuck because I just blew off whatever it was when I put it back on again. But now I'm just adding a little more CA to take care of the stuff that was just stuck there but really didn't have anything on it. So I loaded it up again, then I blew it off. And whatever stayed, I just put the glue back. Yeah, so anyway, when Ray was over here, we were talking about stuff that was classified back then, but uh, it isn't anymore. But uh, it was one of those things to where uh, down the underwater cable for uh, finding subs, tracking subs, and that's what they were uh, doing. But uh, another part of that, which they didn't talk about too much, was communication lines as well. So uh, you would tell me, however, they spotted a Russian sub just off the shore of Hawaii to where you can actually see it with binoculars. And that, uh, it's right where the cable is. So apparently they're trying to, you know, loose lips, sink ships, hello. And, uh, you know, we live in a system of greed at this point. Okay, I gotta get that next. So let's see here if I can put this in there. I may want to use something else in there, but let's see. Put it there. Just bring it over. do something else with this one. It's relatively a big crack. A big crack. But anyway, you know, his, you know, sergeants, lieutenants, yada, 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 tell his men. So basically, the word was spread that stand ready because they may be going to war with China. Hmm. Now, I'm kind of paraphrasing that, which can get people in trouble. That in there has to be done. Something has to be done with that. What am I going to do with that? Ah, oh, shit. Oh, I know what I can do. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I'll get you out of there and do some work. So I don't have to keep dancing around here because I can get a neater job done if you weren't there. Maybe in the clamp. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Get that over here because we got the other side. The other side's worse. Okay, so what I want to try to do this stuff. I have some uh, I do have some stronger stuff. I don't know if it'll be as flexible as I need it to be to do what I need it to do. This stuff has a little forgiveness. This down here, just to see and hope. I'm going to pull a little bit more of this over that. We want it to get in between the holes. See, the thing is, it's in a place to where it's really going to be a bitch. The fiber counts at this point, and I think we're at that point. Good. I'm going to start using the other stuff, though, because I got more of it. I got quartz of it. For this, I don't have quartz. And this is more expensive. Oh, yeah, see, that's going right through those holes for me, which is nice. Oh, got to stay away from that smoke, though. You don't want to breathe it in. You feel it immediately. Like it wants to shut you down as much as one, what you call it, would cost. Okay, so I want that to stick there. But I don't want the wood, the, the board, or the, uh, uh, it's going to happen. That's all there is to it. Even this by itself is a pain in the ass as far as smell. Especially in, in the amount that I'm using. Alright, did any of that stick? Oh, it stuck to my finger and my hand. See, I should really turn it over on its side. this side too so maybe I should start this side